As we all know, Sunday night is the big show. Millions and millions and millions of people will be tuning in to see who's wearing what and who will be going home with a naked golden man named Oscar. <laughs> it's a fun and exciting night for viewers. Uh, it's also a fun and exciting and sometimes terrifying night for the nominees, the presenters, and performers. We checked in with some of our friends of live to ask them about their special memories when they attended the Academy Awards. So fears, tears, joys, hunger, pains, all of it. Take a look. And the Oscar goes to? And the Oscar goes to? The winner is? Okie dokie, Smokey. The Oscar goes to? The Oscar goes to? J.K. Simmons Whiplash. So my favorite Oscar moment would have to be, I mean, I've been there, I've been to the Oscars so many times, it's, uh, it's crazy. No, I've been there once, and the, the special moment for me was just watching J.K. get on stage and accept the award because, you know, having worked with him on that film and just to watch him have that moment and, and basically got a, an Oscar for, for slapping me uh, and yelling at me, so I was glad to, uh, as he said, having a, a very slappable face. The first time I went to the Oscars, what I remember most vividly is how hungry I was and how halfway through the show, Jon Stewart, who was hosting, went around with a big bucket of licorice and fed us all. And I'm eternally grateful to him for that. Uh, so my favorite Oscar memory is 2010. Um, I presented, I think, uh, Best Visual Effects, which Avatar won with my uglier twin, Bradley Cooper. He's better looking. All right, he's better looking. Um, and then I was invited by Barbara Streisand to the governor's ball, and just as I was about to sit down, John Travolta was saying hello to her, and they were having a very nice time, and he went to sit in my seat, and she said, I'm sorry, and just as I walked up, she goes, that's for Gerard Butler. And I said, I've arrived. Our next two presenters are the first mother-daughter team ever nominated. Please welcome Diane Ladd and Laura Dern. My first memory of being nominated was an extraordinary thrill because my mom, Diane Ladd, and I were nominated together for the same film, Rambling Rose, and sitting next to your mom, holding hands, I think I was 23, uh, celebrating getting to be actors and working together and being mother and daughter brings tears to my eyes. One of my favorite memories. To announce the winner, here is the dazzling, delightful, and delicious Carol Burnett. Well, my memory of uh, the Oscars was uh, the time I was, for some reason, picked to present the Best Picture Award. <laughs> so I was quite thrilled, you know, being a television person, it was unusual. And I had to come down, walk down these stairs, not just a few little stairs, but a lot of stairs. And I was terrified. Okay, so my Oscar memory is I was very nervous and um, I got a dress, which I kind of liked the dress, not great dress, but I kind of liked it. Joan Rivers was there and I said, oh, hi. She goes, I love your dress. I said, oh, thank you very much. She goes, but what about your hair? And I, it was, oh my God, it was horrifying because I didn't like my hair. And then that started the whole evening, which made it fabulous. <laughs> I had just worked with Gene Hackman on a film called Mississippi Burning, and we were presenting at the, I think, the 89, um, 1989 Oscars. And uh, we were waiting to present, and I said, oh, I, uh, Gene, I want to, uh, I have to go to the toilet before. And they said, oh, you got plenty of time, you got plenty of time. So I went, and I went there nice and relaxed, and I'm heading back, and then all of these people are running towards me. Quick, 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 quick! And I run out, I run onto the stage, I'm out of breath, uh, the light, it's dark. Gene turns to me, he says, where the were you? And the light comes up. When I went to the Oscars in 1990, I'm in the men's room and I'm doing what men do in the men's rooms in the standing up department. And uh, I heard from one side, really well, well done, very good. And I looked to my right and it was Steve Martin. And, and, uh, and on my left, another voice saying, that was really good, he, he's right. And I looked and it was Cuba Gooding Jr. And it was very thrilling, but of course I could not shake their hands. Uh, and this didn't happen for some time, I'm pleased to say. So health and, health and safety and hygiene were observed during that nice Oscar uh, congratulations. At the moment. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Cuba. 
Well, I've been on the Oscars many times and I've performed many times, but the most interesting thing is the audience is made up of nominees who are all shell-shocked. So you're looking at it because they're all thinking about, if I win, what am I going to say? If I don't win, what am I going to do? So you're looking at an audience with eyes like this and you finally realize, well, okay, good luck, everybody. <laughs> In, I believe, uh, 2004, Catherine O'Hara and I had to sing the song that we sang in the movie, A Mighty Wind. We're now standing backstage as we are being introduced, and I look over to Catherine, who's standing on the other side of the stage, and we both have the deer in headlights look in our eyes, like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? We're actually singing at the Oscars, and we're not singers. Favorite Oscar moment. It would be Kurt Douglas receiving uh, the honorary Oscar, the, the Lifetime Achievement Award. So it was lovely. Um, at, at 90, I think um, he received uh, the Oscar. That's one of my one of my all-time favorite moments. The day that we're going to announce the Oscar nominations, and I'd won the Golden Globe for Casino, and. I have a lot of lines, phone lines in my house because it's the, it's my office and my home. And I thought if one phone line lights up, that means I didn't get nominated. For best performance by an actress in a leading role, the nominees are... So one phone line lit up and I was looking at the phone thinking, okay, all right, I can deal with this. I didn't get nominated. Sharon Stone in Casino. And then all of a sudden, all of them lit up at the same time and all the lines started ringing at the same time. And I couldn't even answer the phone. I just jumped out of my bed and started running around the room like a wet puppy. I was like, ah, 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 and I didn't answer the phone. I didn't even know what to do. One of my favorite um, moments from the Oscars, I guess, is when I was nominated. I was lucky enough to be nominated and I was lucky enough to be nine months pregnant at the same time. The Oscar goes to Catherine. So um, I remember that night um, now as just being a blur. But it, it wasn't until weeks after, after I had my baby in arms, that I was able to watch the rerun and actually remember what I said. I'm giving the Welsh girl, I can't believe it. <laughs> so what I remember about the Oscars is when I was a little kid, they used to be in March, and sometimes they would follow my birthday. And my mom, whenever the Oscars were on my birthday, my mom would make a special dinner and we'd sit in front of the television and eat the dinner and then dream of someday um, that I'd have a career as an actor. Here are the nominees for actress in leading role, Jessica Chastain, Zero Dark Thirty. I knew that would do it for you, well, the mom. I, I know. That story, the music cue, my God, Gilman, you're making us a nervous He man. gets very emotional, especially when it comes to the moms. You're I love like, that. I know you do. That was I a know. great piece. Yeah, that was really beautiful. Was that John, oh, Ogle and Seth? Yeah, good job, guys. Oh, that was beautiful. We'll be right yeah. back with Ellen Burstyn. Stay with us. Yeah.